Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again tonight. Dio, this looks an awful lot like Ubuntu on your screen, and, and it is. And, and it's up here, It's a, this is running in a virtual box session, and it's here to illustrate something that's special for the Antics Live system called a, what we call frugal installation. Now what that is, it's basically going to take the bits and pieces of a live system like what you'd have on a, on a CD or a DVD or a live USB and put it on the hard drive. It's not a difficult process uh, to do and the live system has features to help you do that. I'm running this virtual box because it's very hard to capture grub boot menus when you're without recording software and I'm not fancy. So you get in a virtual box so deal with it. So the what we got here, so this is Ubuntu. So we're going we're to shut down Ubuntu here and boot into our live USB. Okay, we got VirtualBox open here. I'm going to pop in my MX23 ISO. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to start the live system. And the live system, this is the UEFI boot menus. I'm going to be trying to show in those more often because most people are well, with modern machinery or, or booting UEFI these days rather than, than than with the old legacy boots and quite frankly you should. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set the keyboard and everything so that the, the live system's happy and we're going to go to advanced options is where we're going to find all the live persistence options uh, and which of which frugal is one. So the nice thing about the UEFI boot menus is that they have some explanation right on the screen for you. Now, persist all. Let's, let's, let's have a little basic primer here on the live system. The live system has basically a read-only immutable file system. We have that in a file called LinuxFS. Uh, it's basically an ext4 file system inside a SquashFS container, if you want to say that. Okay. Um, so with persist all, we make a partition that we make a file that stores all the root changes, changes to the root file system, and then we make and that go, that gets uploaded in RAM, so it's pretty fast, at, at the cost of a little boot speed. Or we go slash home, slash home is in its own little file uh, that can be accessed separately, and it sits on the USB all the time because it doesn't it, it changes a lot, but it doesn't it it doesn't impact a whole lot of speed when using the computer. Persist root's the same, except we don't use the home persistence file. We just dump everything in the root FS and have fun. Uh, persist static root is the same kind of thing, two different files, but we run them both off the USB. Now, this is great if you don't have a whole lot of RAM uh, or if you want a really big persistence file. So if you got like a 128 gig USB, but you only got 8 gigs of RAM on your system, you really you can't really have load much more than about six gigs into RAM and have a usable system anymore. So leave it on the disk. It's fine. P static root is essentially the same thing, except again no home, no separate home persistence file. Everything lives on its own in one root FS file for the changes. And then persist home is a little different. It forgoes all the changes to the root file system and just has the home folder, which might be nice if you have a nice little setup going that you've made. And maybe you want to access dodgy networks, so you have this read-only file system, uh, but you want a home folder separate for settings or, or whatever. I don't know. The, the, the options are there. I'll leave it to you to figure out what you might want to do with them. That's the basic options. The frugal options are all the same idea, except we call them frugal because instead of living on the USB, they're going to be in a very small compressed area, basically in a folder or a directory, on a hard drive, on an existing file system. And they, they have matching, each of the frugal options has, it has a, it corresponds to one of the pers regular persistence options. Okay, we got frugal home, we got frugal p static, we got persistent. They're all the same as the persistence files above. If that all sounds like gobbledygook, I'm sorry. Rewind the video, slow me down, um, and we'll just keep going forward though with this video. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do, this is a virtual box. I gave it a lot of RAM, but I think I'm going to keep everything on the hard drive. So persist static. So persist static is root, home, root and home separate on persistence device. So that's where I'm, I'm going to use the frugal option of that, persist static. So I should get a file for root changes, a root file system changes, and a, and a home folder, essentially. Separate, separate, separate file for the home folder. All right. 
and then I'm going to save that so that now if you're on uh, actually I'm not going to save it because it's a it's a CD and I can't save it but if you're on a USB you could save it and then anytime you booted that on that machine with that USB you could start up the the the, the frugal without going through the whole steps again and it would just launch the system okay so I'm going to go back to the main menu and we're going to start okay that was a lot of explainer and I'm sorry so now the system's going to ask us to select the target device so I'm going to go ahead and do that press 1 and then it's going to ask us if we want to change the label on the device to Annex Frugal the default is no but I'm going to say yes because it's just going to make booting in the future easier and there it goes it's basically copying the read-only file system into a directory on the hard drive now this hard drive happens to be formatted ext4 uh, most Linux file systems will work. I wouldn't count on BTRFS, and quite frankly, if I think it might work on an NTFS drive, but who wants to do that? Uh, okay, so begin root FS persistence. I'm just going to take the defaults here, but you can. Well, you know what? If you do a custom, you can choose a size for the persistence file. This just limit. I like to make this file as big as the system will let me. Um, which in this case it's a hard drive it's going to make me a big file the default size is a limit based on the RAM of the system and I'm going to make a nice big 12 gigabyte one so I can take take on all sorts of um, um, all sorts of uh, uh, updates okay before I have to do a remaster okay home assist file I don't need a very big one I'll take the default 900 megabytes and it's going to make those files okay now it's going to ask us to set up our, our passwords because now this is no longer now that this is going to be a custom system we probably don't want to use the default passwords that it ships with we probably want to have our own passwords now before you ask yes the live system has a root account and it has a live account and I don't think the system will let you not have a root account uh, by default you could probably hack it to get some way later <clears throat> okay so we're in the system we're, we've booted do I have to run the installer no, I don't, because this is already running on the hard drive. We're done. The frugal install is done. If I rebooted this system, um, it would it would go through and find it again. But let me show you what this file system currently looks like. So, I'm, this looks just like a regular uh, session, except we got this dot live. We got this live folder here. Now, if I go into live, this is the Antics live system essentially mounted in RAM. Okay, this is the part that always gets mounted in RAM. Then we go over here to boot dev. Boot dev is the boot device. This is the device we actually started from. This is the disk that Ubuntu is installed on, and there's the Ubuntu file system. And we're living in this little folder right here. Okay, so we have our frugal installation inside that little folder. We're running on top of Ubuntu, um, and uh, or rather, we're not running on top of Ubuntu, we're running instead of Ubuntu, but we're inside the Ubuntu's file system. So if that sounds like jibber-jabber mush, well, it kind of is, but let's do a reboot, and I'll show you how it, how it works um, the next go-around. So that was the setup, initial setup. So if you come back through and do it, uh, start up the system again, okay, and again... I'm going to go to my persistence option. This is where if you have the live USB and you can save the options, it's nice. This is a read-only ISO, so there's no point in trying to save it. But I had used frugal persist static, so we will boot from that. And this time, instead of trying to set it up, it found it already. We've already launched. It's already handed off to the hard drive. We're done. It's running. Now, why might you want to do this? Well, maybe you want a nice little system uh, that you want to play with, but you don't want to go full, full around with having partitions or having USB stick out of your drive. But wait a minute, didn't we just boot up with a USB stick or with a fictional CD that we had to have in the machine to make that even work? Yeah, we did, but we got your back. So if you go into that uh, live folder I mentioned earlier and go to boot dev, inside the fo this folder here, the an inside the Antics file system folder. You will look in the this directory here. There is a file called grub.entry. And what this has in it is a menu entry that you can add to an existing grub, an existing uh, boot menu. Uh, 
hosted by another Linux installation. Okay, how do we do this? Well, so first off, I'm going to open a root thunar. This is evil, I know, but I'm going to do it anyway. And we're going to go to Ubuntu's boot folder. Ah, that's the wrong folder. And that this is the Ubuntu file system, remember. And then boot and grub. And we don't need to do anything to any of the files that are in here. What we need to do is copy. I'm going to hold down control to make the copy. Copy grub entry into that directory. And we're going to rename it to custom.cfg. Now on... Uh, I think I was in the wrong... Yeah, I was in the wrong one. Okay. Let's do that again. Rename custom.cfg. All right. Now, why did I have to rename it custom.cfg? Because most Debian-based grubs, like Ubuntu's, will automatically source that file without having to do anything else to their grub. They will add that to their grub to the regular grub boot menu. So let's get out of this and check that out. This time, we're going to back out and take the CD out of the virtual box and boot fresh. So I'm going to shut down so I can take the disk out. Shut down instead of reboot. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. And now we're going, I'm going to take the disk out. Start it back up. Okay, here I held down the shift key. Got the boot, boot menu back up. I should have mentioned that earlier. Ubuntu hides its boot menu by default uh, these days. But as you can see, now the menu's up. There is our MX entry. We didn't have to fool with the Ubuntu's grub at all. We just added the custom CFG in there. Hit enter. No disk in the system. And here we are booting up our Antics Live system. In this case, MX 23.4. So that's setting up a, a, a live system on your disk. Call it frugal install. Um, there's some neat tricks. Most of the live system, almost, almost all of the live system tricks can be done with a frugal install that can be done with the live USB. So things like loading to RAM, where you can run the whole system in RAM. Uh, things like rolling back uh, or, or not saving updates if you're running with the, 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 the persistence file and stored in RAM. You can choose not to save it. So you can you know save it or not save it. All sorts of tricks you can do. It's way too many to go through in a video of this nature. Check them out. But this is how you can install a live system on an existing um, Linux install, the list existing Linux file system using the its grub to boot our live system. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to mxlinux.org or throw up a post at forum.mxlinux.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great night.